Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Android Studio and GitHub. So why would you want to use GitHub when you're working in Android Studio? Well, obviously the first reason would be that you need to have a backup. So if you lose your computer or something gets corrupted, you always can go back to an online source. Also, think of version control. The way that GitHub is supposed to work is that you make a small change to your application, you bump the version from version 1.0 to maybe 1.1, describe what you changed, and then you have two copies of it on GitHub, so that way you can always roll back if you make a mistake. Also, teamwork is the most important reason why most people are into GitHub, is because you can share code. You can check it out, and you can check it in, people can see what you're doing. People around the globe can work on a virtual team, can check code in, can check code out, they can make changes, make comments, and share it with each other in a coherent manner. So what I'm going to demonstrate is a very simple version of GitHub and how you would use it for your own personal projects. So I have a very simple project in front of us here. We have the Hello World app. This is the default app that is created when you start. So let's make sure that we can figure out how to back this up. So first of all, we're going to have to go to the GitHub website. And you can see that I'm logged in with my account. There's my pretty face in the corner. And you can see all my repositories. So if you haven't set up an account with GitHub, sign up. It's free. The next thing is I'm going to set up a new repository. So I'm going to choose the green button that says New. And I'm going to give it a name. So I'm going to call mine as Hello World and probably use the word Android because I work in all kinds of different software. And so Hello World Android is what I'm going to name it. Now, do I want to make this available to everybody in the world or do I want to set it to be private? So you're going to choose public or private based on what you need. So in my classes, I ask my students to keep their privacy um, checked on because <laughs> they're all creating very similar projects and, of course, plagiarism is a, is a big deal in my classroom. However, if you're working on something that you would want to share with the world, it's an open source project, private would make it uh, less than effective. Uh, also, we can add a few other op options, but I'm going to leave all those empty and choose Create Repository. So it only takes a second, and here is my repository. Now, if you like, you can go through with the command line. You can do all these things here. So that's certainly an option if you want to copy and paste that or if you want to do it manually. What I want to show you are some of the tools that are built into Android Studio. So I'm switching back into my code here. And it doesn't matter what screen I'm on, whether the layout or the Java screen, it's going to back up both of these. So I go to the menu called VCS. VCS stands for Version Control Systems. And it's not turned on by default for each project. So I choose the second item on the menu that says Enable Version Control Integration. Now it says what kind of integration do you want? So you can see that Git is one of three choices. Now honestly, Git is what most people use, so let's just leave it as the default. Click OK. And now it's going to allow me to do two things. One is create versions of my software, and then secondly, push that software to GitHub. So we haven't done anything yet as far as backing up. Let's go back to the menu again and see what the choices are. So new options. The first thing that I'm going to do next is called commit. You can also see that under the git command there are a lot, a lot of the options here and so we're going to be using those two. But let's choose commit first. So what am I committing? Well commit means I would like to identify which files are in my git project. So you can see that in my project I have this one, the main activity, and then there should be a layout, and it looks like there's other items. There's icons and other things. So to make it simple, I'm just going to check the top box, and everything in my project now is included in this backup. So there's a lot of things in a GitHub project for Android. Now the next item is a message. What do we want to say about our project here? So I'm going to call mine finished version of Hello World, and we'll call it version 1.0. Then, at the bottom, I choose the word commit. Now, what have I done? I have not backed up my project yet. It is not committed to GitHub. It is only identified which files are in the project. Now, it says here you've got a problem, or maybe you have a problem. Go ahead and commit it anyway, and it should be done now. Down here in the bottom, it says 40 files are committed, and we have a version 1.0.
it still is not online. Let's go down to the bottom right corner and you can see there's something called a Git master. So now we have the master version of our software. There's a process called forking which allows you to make different versions of the software, but we're not going to do that right now. I'm interested in getting this thing to GitHub, so let's go to the git command and let's down go down to the word push. You can see that pull and push are both commands, so push is to push it to the website, GitHub. Pull is to get some new software, so you could install a piece of software directly from here. Let's go to push and it will put it online. Okay, it says uh, you're, you're trying to push it somewhere. You have to define the remote. So the remote is the repository I created on the website. So I'm going to click here, define remote. It says, where is the URL? Well, we can just go back into our GitHub page. And fortunately, the URL is listed here as hello world Android. So let's just copy that, switch back into Android Studio and paste. And we should see our new URL. Click OK. Now, the two are going to be linked together now. So I have the finished version, as you can see, this is the notes, uh, version 1.0, and now I'm going to link it into this repository online. And there's the push command. So I wait a second, and hopefully it pushes it. At the bottom it says I'm pushing, and I get an up updated status that says it's been pushed. Let's go check out and see what happened. So I'm going to go back to my repository. As you remember, this is the Hello World app. And if I refresh the page, I should see that there are new items in the repository. And so here they are. All 40 items were pushed two minutes ago. It tells me which version of the app is here. And also you can go through the folders just like you could in your Android Studio. So I go into App. I choose Source. What else is in here? There's a main. I'm looking for the Java class. And Res, uh, let's see here. Let's go to Res. What's in Res? This is probably my layouts and uh, my icons and all the rest of the stuff. So if you want, you can open up an individual file and you can see that the text is here. This is exactly the source code that was in the original Android Studio. So this looks to me like it's a layout and it has a text view. So if I were to compare that with my layout file here, I'm going to show the split view. You can see that this code here, this source code that I was using in my layout is now the same source code that is now on the GitHub page. So let's go back a little ways. I'm going to go back to the main. Let's see if we can find the Java folder. So let's go to my application and let's see there it is mainactivity.java and when I scroll down you can see that I have the main activity class in the source code is listed here. Comparing that with the file main activity Java I got the same thing. Now let's say I do some great improvements. I add some new features. So in my project here, I'm going to add a button. And let's see, I'm going to drag a button into here and I put a constraint on it so it attaches to the bottom of here. Okay, so let's say I program something, that button, maybe it does a toast message or goes to another screen. But now I have a new version of my app. So I'm going to commit it. I want to say uh, commit right here under VCS. And it says, we noticed that you changed one file. The XML file is now different. Notice there are no other files here because I have not updated those. So what's your new commit? Well, I'm going to say that this is my new version of the app. So I write a brief description of what my app is. I can name it version 2.0 if I like, if it's a great improvement. And then I tell it, I put a button on the main screen. I go ahead and commit. Now it says here I'm going to do some code analysis and I'm going to just commit it anyway. So I've got this new file. Let's go check out the uh, split screen. And you can see down below here that says we've got button. Now there's a problem. I probably don't have a constraint correct. But anyway, it's, it's just a new version of the app. Now I want to push this. So I go back to VCS, go to get, go down to push. And now I can see that I have the new version right here. And let's go ahead and push it. And I get a status message that should say it has been updated. One commit. If I go back into my uh, original repository here, I'm going to go back to the very top and see what's in there now. So I can see that now five minutes ago, I have 
posted all of these files. One minute ago, there's a new version. And as you can see, version 2.0 is now a change of the app. Let's go and check it out. What's in app? And let's see if there's anything new in here. So let's go to source. And we're going to go to the resources. And we're going to go look at our layout. So I go to the layout folder and hopefully I see the new guy, this main activity, and we have the new button is in here. Let's back up one level and we should see that the version number listed shows the description of version 2.0. So as you've got yourself your code and you develop it, do a frequent push to say a couple times a day at least to tell yourself what you've done and then you can push it online of course. So that's a very quick introduction to GitHub and how would you use it personally. There are other features that you can do so that you can share your items with a team. You can go back and check versions that you've pushed and uh, all these are more advanced features but this will get you started if you're one of my students. By the way if you're uh, interested in the material that we teach here uh, please subscribe to the channel. I'm a professor of computer science and software development here at Grand Canyon University in Phoenix, Arizona. And so I invite you to look over my shoulder and see what's going on in class because I want you to become a software developer and be a successful person as well. So thank you for looking around and enjoy programming.